You ready? Well, you planted your produce, your, your, your garden, you've uh, let it grow, now you're harvesting it, but you got to store the produce correctly in order to get the most out of it. I mean, you can plant it and grow it, that's two-thirds of it. You add another third, which is the storage or the preserving aspect of it, and you need to do it right, otherwise it's kind of not even worth the effort uh, if you're not going to do it. It's kind of like learning how to engulf drive and chip but you can't putt at all now there's probably people listening and go that's me but okay uh, first of all let, let's uh, talk about we need number one we need when we bring the stuff in out of the garden whatever it is we need to keep it cool we don't need it to bake in the house or in the garage or in the shed or wherever the case is and for some of us it might just be in our kitchen yeah, yeah. Um, now there are some things that you grow that will need to cure now, Holly, what is curing, and what are some of the crops in which one would need to cure? Sure. So, curing is basically holding a holding a, a produce in a specific climate condition or conditions. Um, so, will there be like temperature control, dry, something like that, um, a dry area away from direct sunlight, so that it allows it to essentially cure. So it it's going to dry out a little bit. But it, th it thickens the skin yeah, of the, the, the item. Skin. Yeah. It thickens the skin, maybe dries out a little bit in a good way. And during this time, the outer skin um, does thicken and harden. And the most common one you're going to find is garlic. People cure their garlic. So there's a difference between fresh fresh garlic. Green and garlic, the, yeah. Well, some people call the escaped green garlic. Okay. So I don't know. But um, so like the super fresh garlic versus the cured garlic. Is there a difference in t flavor or taste? Not really. There's a difference in between homegrown garlic taste and store-bought. But with that being said, curing is just a process of allowing that vegetable, which is typically a root crop, to kind of do its thing, dry a little bit, get a thicker skin, so it stores a little bit better. If you do not do it, they will have a little shorter shelf life. And you talked about garlic, onions are another one, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and the regular potatoes. Uh, that we grow and then also winter squash it's pretty important to, to cure that that way it can sustain over the winter we've had winter squash keep for nearly 14 months though when you cut it open it was considerably drier obviously internally but it didn't go bad uh, because we kept it in a, in a relatively uh, good condition environment now there are ideal temperatures in which you should store these items. Now, we all do not live in a Goldilocks environment where everything's perfect and uh, the temperatures are uh, ideal. What are some of these uh, conditions that would be favorable if we had the control over it? So it would be between 50 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So right in that nice sweet spot. And also um, a dark area and dry. So that way it allows produce to store for a longer time and typically if you have if you had a root pantry or a root cellar you would have those conditions right. it would be dry um, low, low humidity low humidity yeah and it would be ideal for storing long term but not everybody has that so your refrigerator is set 34 to 50 degrees 34 and, i'm sorry 34 to 40 degrees so if you're concerned you can get a fridge uh, thermometer. Like they cost like a dollar <clears throat> and you can control more uh, obviously you know uh, many people who live in um, apartments or condos or whatever the case is their refrigerator is essentially their the, the modern root cellar uh, and that's how they store items to a certain degree you could get creative and well could, uh, so not everything has to go in the refrigerator that's right, the other thing that we'll get into right but you could get creative and if you have the room you could always get a second refrigerator, like a smaller refrigerator, like a dorm, mm -hmm. whatever refrigerator. That's always an option. But um, if you, have, but that, again, that's if you have the room. So there's a few things that to keep in mind. For example, like root vegetables, whether it be carrots, beets, turnips, 
uh, any root, rutabaga. Any one of them. Yeah, you when you when you harvest those, you would want you want to cut the tops off, but then you want to leave the dirt on them, the soil on them. It creates a film. It creates like a film, like a barrier, what have you. Now, disclaimer here, if you harvest radishes and you leave the dirt on them and you bring them in and put them on your counter, I don't know about anybody else, but by the time we bring them in, put them on the counter, turn around twice, they've shriveled up about half their size. So what we have found is you bring them in, cut the tops off, throw them in a zip top bag, and that holds that moisture in because they'll shrivel up to nothing in 24 hours and you've worked all this effort for a radish that now you can't even see because it's dried up to nothing. So maybe that's just us. I don't know. Uh, we certainly would like to hear if it's just, if you have had that occurred too at GardenTalkRadio at gmail.com. Um, but yeah, keep that dirt on the potatoes, the carrots, the parsnips, all of those items. And uh, with radishes, like we talked about, we find that you can put a lot of these things in an airtight bag, put in the fridge, drew some artichokes, or sunchokes, uh, uh, Yacons, that type of thing, in the fridge and they in an airtight bag. You don't have to breathe, make them breathe or allow air it in. They'll keep for quite some time. Carrots will keep, what do we have, carrots in the fridge, that one fridge for almost a year. We kind of forgot about them. And they were growing roots in the zip top bag, but they were perfectly fine. We peeled the, uh, the roots off and there they was nothing wrong with them, but they kept for a very long time. Um, what about herbs and, and head lettuce? What What's some tips in order to prolong the harvest or store them better? So, 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 yeah, for leafy greens, you can rinse them very well, wash them very well, and then wrap them loosely like in a flour sack type of rag, whatever, and then you do want to store them in the fridge crisper at low humidity. If you don't have one of those flour sh sacks, damp paper towel inside of a zip top bag, but crack the zip top bag so it's not completely airtight. You don't want to do a damp paper towel. Well, you, well, you can just do a paper pa towel. Paper towel, with, okay. Yeah, with yeah. a Ziploc bag. Yeah. Um, but you can, with herbs, you can do that as well. Typically, like when I buy fresh herbs or uh, cut fresh herbs, I'll put them in a, in a mason jar with water. Right, and you can do that with like little head lettuce, butter head lettuce. For a short term, I mean, you know, lettuce and herbs, your, your shelf life is minimal. Uh, if you're not going to use them right away, or herbs if you're not going to dry them right away. Pretty pretty short uh, shelf life, maybe a week or so, uh, I guess would be a good estimate of time. But then you would, wanna, you would want to dry them. Well, the herbs. If not, the herbs. Not yeah. the lettuce. Not the lettuce. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're going to put the lettuce in like a soup. Uh, we had lettuce soup once. Uh, that was that was not good. Uh, that was sad soup. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, uh, that was one of your experiments. Yeah. It, uh, it, it was a recipe. It just wasn't a good one for us. Uh, if you I don't think for anybody. Well, maybe some people love lettuce soup. <clears throat> uh, if you have Brussels sprouts, you're growing them this year, you're going to harvest them in the fall. Uh, leave, re Remove the leaves and leave the sprouts all intact on the stalk, and they will keep much 